As the foundation includes the design of pile caps per the ACI 318 and CRSI design guides. But how do you actually design a pile cap in as the foundation? Particularly if the pile cap is supported by batter piles due to the presence of high shear loads. This is Javier Encinas and today we're going to design completely from scratch a pile cap supported by batter piles. Let's get started. In this example, we have a steel column supported on a concrete pedestal. The loads transferred by the column are wind, dead and live loads. The vertical load is 50 kips, 300 kips and 400 kips respectively. But in this example, we have some heavy uh, horizontal loads. 100 kips in each direction due to wind, 20 kips due to dead and 30 kips due to life. So most probably in this example, we will need some batter piles to resist these lateral loads. The level pile capacity in compression is 100 kips and a lateral for um, vertical piles is 5 kips. The goal is to find the number of piles, find out if some pile needs to be battered, then the dimensions of the pile cap, the thickness and the reinforcement. For this design, we will use as deep foundation. Let's get started. When you open ASDIP Foundation, you see the project manager where you see the modules included in the package. In this case, we're going to design a pile cap, so we need to create a calculation for a pile cap. Let's call it example. And then this calculation has been added to the tree. Double click on the calculation in the tree. And this is the template for the pile cap design in ASDIP Foundation. In the left pane, you enter the information. In the right pane, you see the results. The first step is to enter the information that was given uh, in the statement of the problem. And the loads are going to be a nominal set of uh, load cases. We know in the statement of the example that the dead load is 300 vertical and then horizontal 20 kips in each direction. Let's enter that. In dead, we said 300 and then 20 kips horizontal in each direction. It's convenient to see graphically what we are doing. So we click on the graph and we can see here the geometry that we are creating. Live load is 400, 30 and 30. Let's enter that. Live load 400, 30 and 30. Wind we have 50 vertical and 100 horizontal in each direction. Let's enter that. 50. 100 and 100 and we have all the loads entered we go to the materials tab to enter the material properties we know from the uh, statement of the problem that the compression allowable capacity is 100 kips so it's a 50 ton uh, piles tension is 50 and lateral is 5 kips so this is okay we don't need to modify that the pile cap the concrete f prime c is 3000 psi and for the column let's use 4 ksi now let's go to the geometry tab here we specify the number of piles the default number of piles is 16 but to determine the number of piles we need to see the results let's go to the at a glance tab in the pile reactions section we can see here the pile actual capacity ratio is 0.73 which looks okay Maybe we can reduce the number of piles to optimize the design. Instead of 16, we can use, for example, 14. And still the ratio is 0.83. And now the geometry looks like that. So it's 14 piles. The soils report recommends round piles, 10 inches diameter. So we enter that information. And the spacing is 3 feet. The minimum pile spacing is 3 diameters or 3 feet whichever is larger. In this case, it's 3 feet. The minimum edge distance is 15 inches, so 1.25 feet. And we're going to specify an accidental pile offset of 3 inches. Let's go to the column tab. From the statement of the problem, we know that the pedestal size is 30 inches by 30 inches. And the pedestal height is 2.6, 2.5 feet. Let's go to the pile cap tab. 
Here in the one way and punching shear areas, we can see here that the shear ratio is quite small, 0 0.43, 0 0.53. That means that we can reduce the thickness of the pile cap. Instead of 48, let's see 40. Still 0 0.77, we can reduce it even further. Probably uh, 38. 0.85 is the maximum, we can reduce it even more, 36, 0.95. So this is a very well optimized thickness of the pile cap. The soil cover is one foot. And practically we have entered all the information that we have. So we have the number of piles, pile spacing, edge distance, pile size. Here we have the thickness of the pile cap. We have the soil cover and we have the dimensions of the column. So we have everything. And the system looks like this. With 14 piles arranged as shown here. We go to the Araglan tab. We can see here that the horizontal capacity ratio of the pile group is 1.25. So it's over by 25%. So we need to batter some piles to take this uh, horizontal load. We go to the Piles tab, specify battered piles. For example, in this case, we can batter these two piles and these two piles in this direction. And in the other direction, we can batter this pile and that pile, this pile and that pile. Let's do that. So the pile number four and pile number eight, four and eight. And here is the pile number seven and number 11, seven, and 11. In the other direction is 12 and 14. And number one and number three. So we have these eight piles battered. The batter angle is uh, 14 degrees. Let's try with that. Okay. Another pile group horizontal capacity ratio is 0.88 which is acceptable. We can see here some issues in the load transfer. This is the size of the column transferring from the pedestal to the footing. Let's go to the reinforcement tab, column tab. Let's use rebars number eight to be consistent. Uh, and now everything is fixed now with the four rebars bottom and top and two rebars left and right. So the column would look like this. We go to the other glance tab again. The column design, the structural capacity ratio is 0.54. Go to the graph tab. We can see here the interaction diagram. The point representing the loads is inside the design interaction diagram, which is acceptable. Go to the other glance tab again. The one way shear ratio is 0.88. The maximum punching shear ratio is 0.95. Excellent. Here in the bending design at the bottom bars, the bending is passing 0.90, but is uh, failing in the minimum uh, steel area ratio by 20%. Let's go to the pile cap tab in the reinforcement tab. We are specifying right now 12 number 8 each side, but it's failing 20% due to the minimum uh, steel area. To find out if this deficiency is due to the minimum bending steel area or the shrinkage and temperature steel area, we go to the detail tab, scroll down to the bending calculations, bottom bars, bottom bars. Here is the problem, and the issue has to do with the structural minimum steel area in both directions. The shrinkage and temperature is, is okay, so we need to add some rebars at the bottom to comply with the minimum steel area. Instead of 12 number 8, let's say 15 number 8 in each direction. And now we comply with that requirement. Let's go back to the other glance, so everything is passing now. The minimum steel area now is 0.96. We go to the condensed tab. Here we can see a more detailed set of calculations, the pile reactions, 
the maximum pile axial capacity ratio is 0.78 and the maximum horizontal capacity ratio for the group is 0.88 the one way shear for the for the controlling load combination everything is passing here is the punching shear the controlling load combination now in bending here on the bottom bars we can see here the maximum uh, factor moments in both directions and here is the bending design strength and this is the ratio the maximum is 0 0.73 so it's passing in transfer between the column and the footing this is the controlling load combination the maximum loads with the design strength and the ratios 0 0.30 this is the design of the pedestal itself and the biaxial strength design ratio is 0.54 we go to the detail tab we can see here a more detailed set of calculation step by step with exposed formulas and references to the ACI and the CRSI design guide codes we go to the graph tab in the pile reactions tab we can see here the pile actual reactions each pile is assigned a number and also the load per this load combination if we click on the controlling load combinations the program finds the controlling load combination here also we can see what piles are better and some of the dimensions if we go to the one way shear we can see here the shear analysis uh, a distance d from the column phase in the x and um, distance d from the column phase in z at the column phase is the one-way shear but at the column phase in x and at the column phase in c we click on the punching shear at the top is uh, distance d over 2 from the column phase all around and at the bottom is at the column phase all around we click on the bending the tab we can see here the moments at the column phase about z and the moments at the column phase about x we click on the column tab you can see here the interaction diagram with the point representing the loads and finally in the construction tab we can see here in a plan and in elevation the final design with the rebars that we just selected for both the column and the pile cap in plan and in elevation as you can see it's easy to design a pile cap even if you need some butter piles to resist high uh, horizontal loads you can complete the design in minutes that otherwise would take much longer and uh, with more effort with this we conclude the presentation of the design example of a pile cap supported on butter piles Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.